Okay, so we say that a sequence, a n, is bounded if there exist real numbers l and u such that every single term of the sequence, so a n for every n, lies between l and u. Now we give l and u special names. l is called a lower bound. And you can probably guess that u will be called a upper bound. So it's a very intuitive definition. The sequence is bounded if it is always lying between two fixed real numbers. And again, you can visualize this in two ways. If you visualize the sequence as a list of real numbers along the real axis, you could imagine this is L, this is U, so your lower and upper bound. And every term of the sequence must lie between these two bounds. So you could imagine a1 being here, a2 being here, a3 being here, and so forth. So every single term of your sequence, whatever the value, will have to be between L and U. If you view your sequence now as a function from the positive integers of the real numbers, then you have the following picture. Just for simplicity of the picture, let's assume that L and U are both positive. So suppose this is L, and that this is U. And again, we know that every term of the sequence must be between L and U. So if you view your sequence this way, we know that at every positive integer, the y value is the corresponding term of your sequence. So a1 would be between l and u. a2, wherever it is, has to be between l and u, and so forth. So a3, a4, a5, a6, a7, and so forth. So you can imagine again, when you sketch your sequence, above each positive integer with the corresponding value of your sequence along the y-axis. So this is the value of a1, the value of a2, the value of a3, and so forth. And every point in your graph, every value of your sequence will lie between the two y-values l and u. And that's really just it. Let's look at a very simple example of a bounded sequence. We could take the sequence to be simply 1 over n, as n goes from 1 to infinity. So if we start listing the terms of this sequence, well, 1 over 1 is 1, then we have 1 half, then 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, and so on. So we can look at the terms of our sequence, say, in this form, So the first term is 1, so a1 is 1, then a2 is 1 half, then a3 is 1 third, a4 is 1 over 4, a5 is 1 over 5, 
a6, 1 over 6, a7, 1 over 7, and so forth. So we can clearly see an upper bound. The terms of our sequence are getting smaller and smaller, so they will never exceed 1. You can attain an upper bound, but you can't exceed it. So here, 1 is a proper upper bound. And how low can the terms go? Well, these terms will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but they are always strictly positive. So the terms will never go below the x-axis, so never go below the y value that is 0. So y equals 0 is our lower bound. Therefore, the sequence 1 over n is bounded between 0 and 1. And you would arrive at the same conclusion, of course, if you looked at the sequence as an infinite list of real numbers along the x-axis. So you would look at a1, which is 1, then a2 is 1 half, then a3 is 1 third, a4 is 1 quarter, a5 is 1 over 5, and so on. And you can clearly see the terms are getting smaller, so they will never go beyond 1. So 1 is an upper bound, but they're getting smaller, yes, but they are always strictly positive. So they will never be below 0, and so 0 is your lower bound. And again, always feel free, if you ever wish to visualize a sequence, to visualize it as either an infinite list of real numbers along the x-axis, or as a graph of a sequence, where above each positive integer is the corresponding y value being the term of the sequence. And that's it.